Today I'm showing you guys the entire process front to back on how to speed run loop kits from scratch. I feel like starting a sample pack company and pumping out a bunch of kits is such an untapped market. There are a fair share of people that do it, but there's not a lot of people that do it right. And if you really commit and you stick to making five loops a day, you'll be able to drop a kit every two weeks. And if you have other producer homies that are loop makers, feel free to put them on if they're not tapped into loop kits yet. Nothing's stopping you guys from collaborating on a project and potentially making a lot of money from that. And in this video, I'm just going to be going over a couple of boxes I tick before getting into making a loop kit before we get into it though be sure to leave a like and a comment if you guys are enjoying this content but without further ado let's get into the video starting off this is a loop that i made for my weeklies and that goes into my first point that i want to cover which is fully commit to your weeklies i feel like if you start making loops you instantly need to start working on an email list just go through a bunch of youtube type beats and people that are popping on beat stars and tap in with the producers that make beats in the style of your loops and if you set yourself a number like making five loops a day and hitting up five producers a day in a month or two, you'll have a massive head start in your loop making career. So as soon as you finalized your loop, as you can see, I structured it out in stems. And this is an essential for loop kits, for weeklies, literally anything to do with samples. And when I bounce out my loops, I always keep it as MP3. It's just easier like that. And I stick to a pretty basic labeling system. I just have the name, the BPM, and the key next to that, as well as my IG handle. And bouncing out your loop as an MP3 is only one of the many things you can actually do with a loop. So after I bounce out my loop as an MP3, I try and go through all my MIDI and see which ones I can keep. And I've sometimes gotten like two or three midis off one loop so you really just need to like milk as much as you can from a loop especially if you're working towards kits because you want to just beef up a kit as much as possible so for instance i have this main lead midi So to bounce this out as a MIDI, you'll just go to this arrow in the top left corner and under file, you'll go to export MIDI as, and I usually just label it exactly as I did the loop. And then next up, I have these chords as well. And for a MIDI like this, this is such a basic chord progression. So I would try and add a top line to it, maybe add some more bass notes to it, try and keep it interesting and then bounce it out as a MIDI. Another thing that you can milk out of a loop is phrases. And this is basically just small snippets that people put effects on and other producers can use that in their beat. I've cooked up with a bunch of phrases in the past and it's always been helpful to me so how i would do this is i would solo out some of my instruments and see if there's some parts that stand out to me So I'm thinking to bounce out this little phrase here. Out of context from the beat, it kind of sounds like an Egyptian lead. So what I would do is I would go to my mixer and open up an instance of Edison. After that, just press record and press play. Now that you have that, you can just trim the dead ends and now you have a phrase. So after that, you can just drag it into a channel rack and put some more effects on it. You can change it up completely if you want to. The possibilities really are endless. Another really easy thing you can do is create one shots for your kits and you can straight up use the plugins that you made the loop with and just kind of change up the parameters to your liking. And then the same thing, just record it into Edison, add a bunch of effects onto it. But once again, there's so much you can get out of just making a loop. So now that you have a loop, you have the MIDI, you have phrases, you have one shots, you're already building up a pretty substantial substantial kit. And the last thing I could think of to really milk out the kit is going to your effects. And obviously everyone's not going to have portal and like shape a box and shit. So when you do make presets for effects plugins, try and keep it stock or keep it to a plugin that relatively a lot of people have. For instance, with my gravity loop kit, I had a bunch of gross beat presets and this is straight up just gross beat effects that I put on the actual loops for the kit as well. So it's not that I'm like going out of my way and putting time in to make these. It's straight up in the project I made the loops with. So why not just put it into the kit? And then the very last thing that's a bit techy that i'd only recently got into is adding drums to your kits i got accepted into a beta program of this one software called deep sampler and this is an ai website where you can just drag in any drum sound and it spits out four different variants for you after that you can obviously put in your own effects and kind of give it your own style and keeping all of this in mind you'll be able to stack up a kit in like two weeks as long as you guys stay consistent and stick to your schedule you'll have such a head start ahead of everyone else if you just start today but that is about it for the video i hope you guys enjoyed once again be sure to check out the description for all our links thank you guys for the constant love and support as always and i'll see you guys in the next one